Globalization refers to the integration of markets in the global economy, leading to the increased interconnectedness of national economies. The markets where globalization is particularly significant include financial markets, such as capital markets, money and credit markets, and insurance markets, commodity markets, including demands for oil, coffee, tin, and gold, and product markets, such as markets for motor vehicles and consumer electronics. The globalization of sport and entertainment is also a feature of the late 20th and early 21st centuries. Globalization means that the world is becoming interconnected by trade and culture exchange. In this video, we will look at the reasons for globalization and its positive and negative influences. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. So what is economic globalization, and what is free trade? Globalization is the process by which the world is becoming increasingly interconnected as a result of massively increased trade and cultural exchange. Globalization has increased the production of goods and services. The biggest companies are no longer national firms but multinational corporations with subsidiaries in many countries. Globalization has been taking place for hundreds of years but has sped up enormously over the last half century. The theory of free trade, appearing in the 18th century, was initially formulated to prevent the Dutch from closing their colonial empire to English commerce. It served as the political rationale for British colonial expansion, imposing an international division of labor that revealed itself to be much more effective for pillaging resources than the colonial system itself. In 1941, the Anglo-Saxons devised, as an aim of the war, a shift from the prevailing mode of colonial exploitation to that of unequal exchange in the aftermath of the victory over Nazi tyranny. The Atlantic Charter promoted decolonization, free trade, and freedom of the seas. This model was formalized in 1947 with the GATT agreements. This was reinforced during the Reagan-Thatcher era by a vast movement of privatization and deregulation. Neoliberal globalization emerged in 1980 in reaction to the increasing powers of government and contracting commercial profits. It is generally argued that neoliberal globalization benefits the rich and harms developing countries. We must acknowledge that the world distribution of wealth and income is highly unequal. The richest 10% of households in the world have as much yearly income as the bottom 90%. Globalization contributes to greater income inequality. Neoliberalists are often portrayed as opportunists, interested in personal gain through extortion of third-world resources. Neoliberalism advocates the flow of capital that results from global trade but opposes increased immigration, which inadvertently positions poorer countries as victims of financial imperialism. The rise in underground globalization, involving the illegal flow of resources, is indicative of an absence of governmental control, legality, and morality, supporting the perception that rich countries are looking to ignore the rules at the expense of poorer people. On the other hand, if we expand on this further and consider the number of jobs dependent on foreign direct investment and international trade, perhaps globalization isn't all bad. In 1991, President Bush announced his vision of New World Order, globalization. The objective was to fill and profit from the void created by the disappearance of the USSR and extend Anglo-Saxon domination in a manner that closely twinned economic and military expansion. The new model encompassed not only the free trade of goods but also of services and capital, to be regulated by an arbitrating tribunal that would constrain the sovereignty of individual states, which is today embodied in the World Trade Organization. In the 21st century, this ongoing process has led to the dematerialization of the world economy. Favoring the expansion of military-related industries while manufacturers of domestic consumer goods shut down, the Anglo-Saxons created an economy based on financial products, meaning speculation, and the profits derived from intellectual property, so-called fair use. They extended their control over the free trade of goods and services in airspace using the war on terror as a pretext and over the seas under cover of a war on piracy. In the meantime, however, the exorbitant costs of the neocolonial occupation of Iraq in 2003 nearly brought about the complete financial collapse of the empire. At this point, President Obama and Prime Minister Brown attempted to save the system by eliminating foreign financial positions 
thus compelling capital to migrate in the direction of an Anglo-Saxon fiscal paradise. Additionally, Western governments have, in a concerted way, placed their means of public finance entirely in the hands of a small number of private banks. As a result, these are now in a position not only to avert collapse but also to acquire firms as they spiral into failure, accelerating the already gigantic concentration of riches. Central bankers have never done more damage to the world economy than in the past 10 years. One may argue this is because they never had the power to do that if their predecessors had had that power, who knows. Still, the global economy has never been more interconnected than it is today, due mostly to the advance of globalism, neoliberalism, and perhaps, even more, technology. The people have been turned into hosts, a food source, rent payers, for the 1% inbred parasites, leeches, rent collectors, by the re-establishment of the West Virginia coal mine experience, circa 1900. By incrementally monopolizing necessities, food, water, shelter, utilities, by debt expansion, and by wage suppression. We now work in their company mines, cube farms, whatever, live in their company housing, mortgage, shop in their company store, credit card debt, pay monopoly prices for necessities. Literally, this is cradle to grave slavery to a small collection of nanny transnational corporations, all owned at the top by a handful of globalist banksters. And by captivating our educational system, the globalists have deliberately leveled our children to the lowest classroom denominator, dumbing them down by not teaching cursive or understandable math, by falsifying history and English literature, demonizing America's founding, trashing our holidays, slandering our founders as slave owners, lying about Columbus and America's discovery, promoting perversion and debauchery and piggybacking it onto Christmas and Easter. It is the agenda of the communist Frankfurt School now in implementation. These globalists try to install a single new world order, but the mechanism they use is a Ponzi, and it does not Ponzi out enough good stuff to convince the global population globalization is a good thing. Wheels came off over the last five years, and many of the ideals of globalism people recognize is going to be dreadful for them, their families, and their future descendants. Still, they push free trade. Why bother when people cannot afford the goods under free trade to the point you have to have a minimum wage job to be able to afford even the Chinese goodies? This is all engineered. If you think for a second that globalism is dying, just wait, the huge false flags are coming. Once they instill fear, they will establish their new world order. Fear established the United Nations, and fear started the war on terror, fear installed X-ray scanners around the world. Fear is the greatest emotion the elite prey upon, and the civil wars, economic turmoil, and geopolitical wars that are coming will put fear in the toughest people. When there are enough death and mourning, people will give in to anything to have peace, even if that means losing their rights and constitutions order out of chaos, and it's coming very soon. Where one sees an end to globalization, the truth is, the elite have manufactured this current situation in order to get the total collapse to establish total globalism through the UN. Global governance, global money, and global passports. Sounds great, until you realize it's nothing more than the largest surveillance and tyrannical system ever imagined. You are spied through everything. No more removable batteries in phones, mics in TV remotes, mics in Amazon Echo, smart TVs, smart fridges, smart meters. Smart because they put them in your house without force. Globalism is not dead, it's a made-to-order crisis through civil war, division, race wars, financial turmoil, and wars. All at once. Out of chaos came order. Out of World War II, came the UN, which has not stopped a single war yet. It hasn't stopped hunger, disease, or human trafficking. And in fact, it may be a major contributor to them. Wake up. That new world order, the mark of the beast money of the Bible, is in your face. Globalization is naturally deflationary as wealth and resources are spread out over the world. Globalization cannot survive without endless money printing and stimulus by central banks. Globalism isn't ending, it's just beginning, unfortunately. The banksters are crashing the old world order and are getting ready to replace it with their even more controlled new world order cashless society. This is the Hegelian dialectic in play, problem, reaction, solution. All roads lead back to the fiat money system, broken countries, broken trade, broken bond markets, broken manufacturing, broken businesses, broken housing markets, 
Broken people. Malinvestments. Big government. Mass immigration. Wars. Even climate change. End the Fed. End the ECB. End the BOJ. End the PBOC. End the BO. End the SNB. End the RBA. Bring back the classical gold standard. You are an old man if you still think in terms of nations and peoples. There are no nations. There are no peoples. There are no Russians. There are no Arabs. There are no third worlds. There is no West. There is only one holistic system of systems. One vast and immense, interwoven, interacting, multivariate, multinational dominion of dollars. Petrol dollars, electro dollars, multi dollars. Reichsmarks, yens, rubles, pounds and shekels. It is the international system of currency which determines the totality of life on this planet. That is the natural order of things today. That is atomic. And subatomic and galactic structure of things today. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.